Hello, and welcome to my presentation on mRNA vaccines, their history, development, and future applications. Vaccines were first invented in 1796 by Edward Jenner, a physician living in England. He noticed that milkmaids did not seem to contract smallpox and wondered why. On further examination, he discovered that the milkmaids had contracted cowpox, a similar virus, and that in turn led to protection from smallpox. Jenner's discovery led to the development of vaccines as we know them. For more than 200 years, vaccines have consisted of a small piece of the virus, whether inactive or active but in weakened form. Our immune system is an amazing thing. It recognizes foreign pathogens in the body and develops antibodies to defeating that pathogen. There is one specific antibody for each type of infection that we've experienced. Vaccines are great because they teach our body how to defend against foreign organisms or pathogens without ever having to experience infection. Vaccines to date have carried a small part of the virus in them. This teaches our body how to develop appropriate antibodies to this virus and in turn if we ever encounter the virus out in the real world, our bodies are ready to defend against it. With the introduction of COVID-19 in early 2020, a new vaccine came to market using mRNA technology. mRNA vaccines work differently than vaccines we've seen in the past. mRNA vaccines do not need a piece of the virus in order to trigger that immune response. mRNA vaccines contain a set of instructions from the virus that we want to provide protection against. The body recognizes those instructions as a recipe to make a protein that resembles the virus. Once the body has used these instructions, it gets rid of them. Our immune system then recognizes the new protein as foreign and creates antibodies to protect us from this virus in the future should we be exposed to it. A lot of people are concerned that this new technology was rushed because it came to market so quickly. However, the study of mRNA to build immunity has been in development for over 25 years. In the 1990s, researchers were injecting mRNA into mice, and by 2017, human trials were underway for mRNA vaccines against HIV, influenza, Zika virus, and rabies. There are several advantages to mRNA technology over traditional virus protection. Advantages include safety. There's no potential risk of infection or mutation. Efficacy. They are more stable than their counterparts. Making a new vaccine is also simple. It just requires making a new mRNA sequence against whatever you want to protect against. Also production. It's rapid, inexpensive, and scalable. What's exciting about mRNA technology is that there are so many future applications, especially given these advantages. Current applications include ways to protect against malaria, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, and cystic fibrosis. There have also been inquiries into using this technology to fight cancer. You'd simply code instructions to make a protein that resembles the mutation similar to what's seen in cancer tumors. The body would then make antibodies to these proteins and target cells that resembled them. This would in turn get rid of the cancer cells in the body. This could possibly eliminate or reduce the need for chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery for cancer treatment. Really, the possibilities are endless. This technology can be used to treat almost any pathogen. 
The only thing that needs to be changed is the sequence of mRNA in the vaccine. Vaccine development and the eventual development of mRNA technology relates well to what we learned in class about the innovation S-curve. We start at the bottom of the curve in the area of ferment where Edward Jenner introduced the first vaccine to treat smallpox, actually the first vaccine ever. Then vaccines were developed using the same principles to treat other viruses and illnesses. Then at the top, there's the phase of maturity where there's wide acceptance and use of vaccines, both an active and a live but weakened version. The introduction of the mRNA vaccine against COVID represents a time of discontinuity. We can expect a phase of takeoff as this new mRNA technology is used to treat other viruses and pathogens, eventually leading to maturity where perhaps we can cure cancer or other serious ailments. It's really exciting to think of the potential of this technology. I hope you learned something valuable about vaccines, in particular mRNA vaccines, their development and future potential. Thank you so much for your time.